Today, Checkpoint was contacted by a person close to Materia Ture during the time she was on the DPB. The person who asked not to be identified said the family had found it galling listening to Materia Ture's claim she had committed benefit fraud because she and her young daughter depended on the domestic purposes benefit to survive and it wasn't enough. The person strongly alleged that Materia Ture had received significant support from her daughter's grandparents during the period in which she was on the DPB. And they also strongly suggested this was contrary to the narrative about her poverty that Materia Ture had made public in her now famous speech at the Green Party AGM on July 16th. In short, they asserted that Materia Ture had sufficient support to mean she did not need to lie to wins about her circumstances and they have found it, and I quote, outrageous to hear otherwise. Now, we had no idea whether or not this was true, so we put the accusations in writing and emailed them to Materia Ture so she could respond. We would not have gone to air without a formal response. A short time ago, she called us to resign. Um, I'm resigning as the co-leader of the Green Party today. Why? I, because the primary reason is because the scrutiny of my family is becoming unbearable. Um, there are... Uh, there have been lots of allegations made so far. There will be more. There's no way that um, any family can kind of withstand the scrutiny, and they don't deserve it. Um, the, there's, there's that reason. And the other reason is I am 100% committed to the project of changing this government and having the Greens come into government. And I think that if I continue on as co-leader, um, I hinder that. I don't want to because I spent 15 years trying to make that happen. Um, so between both the personal, um, you know, my, protecting my family as best as I can um, and protecting my party as best as I can, I think this is the right step. Right, so you will remain at the top of the list and you will be back in Parliament no. uh, uh, after the election? No. So I will take myself off the list um, and uh, I will continue to be a candidate in Te Tai Tonga, um, but that's because I believe in the cope up of the Greens and I want to hold um, the mana of all of those people who have been supporting me over the last um, months. Um, they, they have been asking me to stay and to remain as their voice. And so I, f I need to find a way to honour that. So I will continue as a candidate for the party vote um, in the election, um, but I'm not intending um, to, to return to Parliament. So you are effectively resigning as an MP? In effect, um, I'll stay on as a, technically as a Member of Parliament um, through this process. It's going to take quite some time to wrap up 15 years of a political career, but, um, and there's quite a lot of transition to undergo. But, so, and I also um, still have parliamentary duties that I need to undertake, so I will stay on as a Member of Parliament um, and um, as a candidate uh, for the seat um, for the party vote, but um, there's no, I have no intention of returning back to Parliament and it's highly unlikely I would. What's happened since you raised the story of raising your daughter in circumstances you described as stressful and terrifying at the Green Party AGM on July 16? What's happened since then and did you tell the whole story at the time? I did tell the whole story and the, the thing is of course that any life um, you know, no life can really kind of withstand the scrutiny, that, especially the political kind of attack scrutiny. But, I mean, beyond that, I told my story, you know, to open this conversation. Terrible things happen to people. Terrible things happen to people on the benefit. Um, and somebody needs to talk about that. Um, I, I offered up my life and my story for that conversation. Despite everything, I still think it has been worthwhile doing, given what um, the, the public response and the community response to it. Um, but, but I have a, also have a duty to both my party and to my family. And my family just don't deserve um, what's happening with them at the moment. And I've got to, I've got to take with both responsibility and control of that. Um, and my party, you know, we are we are actually on track to change the government and to be part of a new government, and um, that's the project I've given 15 years to, and I want to make sure that that happens. I think I'm an impediment to that now. You have raised this as an issue. You have raised the difficulty of surviving on a benefit. 
you retweeted the story we played on Checkpoint last night that Mihinaragi Forbes spoke to people in South Auckland and they talked about having to get into prostitution, having to do drug dealing, the sort of deprivation and desperation that comes with a life in which you are simply not getting enough money to get by. But we have also heard from people, and by God, this is a tough conversation to have, who are telling us this wasn't your experience, that you had the most beautiful and generous support from your daughter's grandparents. In other words, you told an important and relevant story, but it wasn't exactly yours. Is oh, that true? No, that's not true. And I mean, you know, there, there was a, a young man in Mitty's story who talked about how he wouldn't um, declare work because, um, if he, because he needed that bit of extra money. I mean, there were a range of stories. Um, and that is the kind of experience. Those are the kinds of choices people are making. He was talking about how he wouldn't declare income to win. That's, would, that's technically unlawful, and he could be, um, you know, he could be investigated for that. Um, there was another woman who talked about having to um, uh, work as a prostitute. I mean, you know, these are these are the choices that poverty forces. People I couldn't to agree make. more, and they yeah, are and so desperate, my, and my, grim, awful right, choices. They are, they are, and my choice, my the, the choice that I made to to provide the best financial security for my daughter and I was to not tell wins about my flatmates and I've you know there's been I've had hundreds of people who've said that they've done the same thing or something similar so I and, know and, and it must be very empowering for them to hear your voice but but yes. but look and, and but we've been contacted I guess because we ran that stuff last night and we've spoken to you twice and we and we've absolutely heard you say that yes. from from people saying you were getting wonderful support from Anne Hartley and that, the, and that yeah. the sort of experience you're describing usually happens to people who don't kind of have an Anne Hartley in their family. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you no, know, I know exactly what you mean. And I've always said um, um, that I did have, you know, really fantastic support from fa friends and family and that, you know, Pew Pew's family you know, really supported me, especially when I was in law school, with things like, you know, childcare, stuff like that, like the sort of stuff you would expect. But I was entirely financially responsible for myself and my daughter, and um, and everybody's circumstances are different, and that's also part of um, the experience of being on the benefit. Lots of people didn't have the family support that I had. If I hadn't had it, um, I wouldn't have been able to get through law school, and I've said that a million times. Um, when I've talked about my experience. I said that during my speech, actually, um, on at the AGM. On the 16th. The support that I got, yeah. But, you know, since then, uh, there's been, uh, you know, stories change and, and um, the way people hear and represent stories change. And I can't, I can't stop that from happening. Um, but, you know, but I don't know how else to describe my life. I was financially responsible for my daughter. Did you get, can um, I put this on the record? Can yeah. I put this tough question on the record so you can yeah. answer it and everyone can hear you answer it? Yep. Did you get financial support from the Hartleys? And no. are, so, they, so they weren't contributing at all to, to, no. to, to you raising your daughter? No, what they were, do, were doing, and like, um, like other of my friends um, and other family members where they could, they were helping me with things like um, picking her up from childcare when that was necessary, um, taking her um, for the night when it meant that um, I could study, for example. You know, it was that kind of stuff, the normal, what you would expect families to do, especially when they're wrapping around a child. And I was, was really lucky to have that. And did you ever live with them? No, no, no. I, see, this is the thing, I just, so the, 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 the reality of my life and, and people's fallacies about my life are just becoming so intermingled that my whole family is now having to suffer from the scrutiny. And so it's, and even the fact that the questions are being asked, um, is a, these are questions about my family and their contribution to, um, you know, to our well-being. And it, it's, it's really unfair. It's unfair so that, so, that so they're, if they're it's unfair, things. and if you are able to say no to all the questions that I'm asking you, yeah. What, what, why are you going? Why, why, um, why because, isn't, be, because, you know, yeah, let's look know, back. Yeah. And people have been citing, people have been doing lots of comparisons. Bill English, 
you know, he, he said his house was in Dipton. Uh, he said it was his primary residence under Parliament's rules. He claimed a housing allowance in Wellington, but his wife was a GP in Wellington. His children were going to school in Wellington, and it was very much his family home. Now, he repaid $32,000, and he stayed on. He and, did. And, he did. And, and, but he... And, and so, and people are saying, hold on a sec, how, how come Materia Today is being subjected to this kind of scrutiny? And, and now people will say, how come she is going? Why are you going? Because, because it's not just about me and what I did. It's not just about me and the investigation into um, what I didn't tell wins. It's about my family. It's about whether, you know, my daughter was, there's, people are questioning whether she lived with me. I mean, John, this is... This is a whole different level of investigation than Bill English got. And, and although I am confident about saying no um, to those allegations, they are being made and the family still suffers for them. And I, I have a duty to them. How do we have these conversations then? In, in, in which I don't know. <laughs> well, well it's, it's important, isn't it? Yes, it is. Because for, for, and I asked you this before, actually, and, and the interview was way too long and we didn't run it. So I really need you to answer this question well now. If Parliament is a House of Representatives, we're going to have people in it who didn't always get their young lives right, aren't we? Yes, we are. And, we and, are. and, and how do we inject realism and rational stock taking into our treatment of those people two decades on and and is it about how those people tell their stories as well as how we treat them i guess i guess it's in politics um there is a whole nother game that gets played um that means that um vulnerability um, is seized upon. This is what I've learned over the 15 years. And making yourself vulnerable in politics puts you at risk. And I chose to do that with my story because I thought the risk is worth it. I still do. Um, but um, how do I ensure fair treatment? You know, if Bill English's family and his circumstances and what his kids were doing, all of those things didn't matter to the media. I don't know why. I, I can't explain why it matters. Um, why these questions are being asked about my family. It's just the nature of um, the process that we're in. I can't make it fairer right now. What I can do is I've exposed it, I guess. Um, I have opened the conversation and allowed myself to be vulnerable. There is a, there is a price that I'm paying for that, um, but, it's, but it's still worth the price. Um, it's just that I have to now focus on what is best for my family and for my party and this level of scrutiny whether you consider it fair or not um, is just um, is just too difficult um, they my family just don't deserve to be put under this kind of scrutiny I don't I'm not sure how else to answer your question John I really don't know do you regret having raised it on July 16th? I guess everything you are saying and everything you have said to me and everyone who's asked you that question is yeah. that you don't uh, I mean, I wish it had turned out better. I wish I hadn't had to do this and quit as co-leader of the Greens. But, um, but uh, there is a movement to fix the system that is causing so much harm. That is worth, has been worth it. I'm now of the view that the best way to keep, um, to keep that issue at the forefront is to remove myself and to protect my family. That's, that's what I've got to offer. Do you know who will replace you as co-leader with James Shaw? Um, no. Um, it's The last time um, we lost the co-leader, uh, we didn't replace him um, for some time, and um, the party will make a decision about that. It's not... I guess this is one of the benefits of a co-leadership model is that it's not necessary to find a new one um, to replace a co-leader immediately. And James has been fantastic and will continue to lead our party fantastically. Materia Ture, who was speaking to us uh, a short time before we came on air to say she was resigning. A Green Party media conference has just begun at Parliament. We're hoping to speak with the party's co-leader, James Shaw, about who will replace Ms Ture and have more reaction throughout the programme.